What's up guys, Shane here from Deck 3 d printing out today, we're checking out the March Maker Box. Welcome back guys. So another month has come and another Maker Box has come, which excites me because again, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos on the Maker Box, you should go back and watch those, but I love receiving this. There's so much new filament out there to test. There's so many different kinds I've never tested before, so this is a great, great learning tool for anyone who wants to learn more about other materials and has the ability to print some of them. All that being said, let's get started. What's in this month's box? All right, on top we got some Starburst. All you good, have a little bit of candy there. And here we have the paperwork, so it tells you to join the community, how to get a free Maker Box with the affiliate program we'll talk about later. What should you print? They have a listing of things that take up just about as much on one of these spools on Thingiverse. They have a nice playlist there. They add things all the time. So that's really cool. The discount codes, you go on their website. And then for all of these uh, samples, you can actually buy at a discount from Printed Solid or from MakerBox directly, all depending on where they're selling it at. So that's always nice to have. We have some stickers. We have a 3D Fuel sticker. And then we have a Knife Force glass fiber sticker. Here we have a 50% off coupon for 3D Fuel, their Pro PLA. So it means that tells us a little bit of what's coming in the box by the stickers and all that. All right, let's get into them. All right, up first we have a glass filled fiber nylon from Fiber Force Italy. And it is in a clear, and it actually looks really rough. It's, it's not terribly rough, but I mean, there's definitely some texture to this sucker here. All right, so the settings are hot end temperature, 240, 260 centigrade. Bed temperature, room temperature to 70 plus glue stick. That's good to note. Speed, 30, 70 millimeters a second. Info, a nylon reinforced with fiberglass to improve stiffness while still maintaining toughness. Hard nozzle is advised. Can be dried with RIT or similar. So you go to dry this in a food hydrator, which I have right here behind me. I've been drying filling in there for quite a while now. So this should be interesting. So it's supposed to be really strong. That's a clearish. I'm wondering what the end all texture is going to be, how smooth it will be, and how clear some of it will be because obviously it's a very translucent right now. Ooh, we'll see how it turns out. Up next, per the coupon we have here, we have Pro PLA from 3D Fuel in a very nice and vibrant red. So the print settings on this is probably should be normal PLA. It's uh, hot end temperature, 210 to 240 C. The bed temperature, room to 60 C. Speed, 40 to 100 millimeters a second. Info, Pro PLA or APLA Plus has a higher impact strength than ABS and PLA with heat resistance rivaling that of ABS. So they talked a lot about this and I really want to see how well we can print this out. So another good one. I really like the color, it's very bright. You can see that there. All right, so here we go. So we have some PLA, some temperature color changing PLA from Gizmo Dorks. I did a review on Gizmo Dorks PLA. You can check it up here if you want. It's an older video, but I had really, really poor results with their filament. Uh, it was very inconsistent when I got them out middle of the spool, had under extrusions, issues like that. But this is a very small sample. We'll see how it ends up turning out. I do wonder what color it will change with and whether it's cold or warmer temperatures. Okay, well, let's get into it here. All right, the print settings, 190 to 225C. The bed temperature, room to 70C. Speed, 30 seconds per second. Info, PLA that changes from blue to white when exposed to warmer temperatures. So I bet you if I could do my hand here for a second, it might change a little bit of color. Yep, it's already lightening up. I, you're too far away to see, but it's already lightening up, so we'll get out the heat gun whenever we go to do this. We can heat that up, and it probably actually will end up printing white. So the time lapse on this will actually be kind of cool to watch. All right, well, I recognize this bag, and it's Form Futra. Form Futra and I don't have very good prints together, but we'll see how this one turns out. This is their Python Flex, again, from Form Futra, and it is a flexible material. It seems to be a semi-flex. It's not terribly flexible. But let's look at the settings here. Hot end temperature, 220 to 250 centigrade. Bed temperature, room to 60 C. Speed, 30 to 60 millimeter seconds. are pretty high for a flexible filament. Python Flex is a high-performance, flexible, thermoplastic, uh, polyurethane, so TPU filament, which is designed for high speed printing on both direct drive and Bowden style extruders. That boasts a lot. Yeah, so it's black, it's flexible. I'm gonna try to print it fast on the FT5 and see how it goes on that. I pretty much print all of these on the FT5. 
just for consistency sakes. But we will definitely put it through the paces. All right, well, I'm gonna eat some of this candy and we're gonna go ahead and throw some of these on the printers and see how they turn out. Back in just a second. All right guys, and we're back. So these came out pretty good. I had a little bit of issues with some of them. We'll kind of go over that. But overall, everything printed pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with this Flex one, or maybe this is the result it's supposed to be. But I was able to get a successful print out of all four filaments, which is always a plus, because there's some months, as you've seen in the past, it just doesn't go so well. So let's take a close look and see how the fine details of these came out. All right, so here we have the Pro PLA from 3D Fuel. Now this failed twice on the FT5. I uh, don't know why. It clogged. I think maybe uh, there wasn't enough cooling on the on the cold end part. I don't. I'm not sure. But either way, this failed twice. This one came off of the Hypercube. So it still has a little bit of issues with like retraction and sub movement. The belts are not quite the best. I need to buy a little more expensive belts, but it was a, still a decently quality print. I think it was over extruded just a little bit. So I just read is a little hard to focus on for the camera, but here we go. Look at the bottom sides. Very, very nice. It has the standard PLA type of issues here with those first layers. That overhang is so extreme there. It does have issues with that. All the support came off really well. There's a little bit still left in here actually, but it all came up pretty well and it performed, you know, averagely over top of the support that went down. Again, top layer is pretty good. A little over extruded. It's a little bit rough up top here. So I'm a little, you know, not too sure exactly what happened there, but overall pretty successful print. And the filament is like, you know, a standard PLA. I wouldn't necessarily call this pro PLA. All right, here is the glass filled nylon from Fiber Force Italy. This came out really, really well. This printed first try on the FT5 inside the enclosure. I'm not sure if I had to enclose this, but I did. And you know, there was no cooling fan used on this one at all either. So it all came out pretty well. But again, you see the red was in there first, so I didn't actually get all of it out. And I didn't realize that till I pulled it off the bed because I thought I got it all. Clearly I didn't. That's the problem with printing a color and then printing a clear. I just need to purge it more. But I mean, aside from that, Overtop supports it really well. It's actually was a little hard to get some of the supports out. This one's mostly out. This one still has some left down here, and this has some left up in here. Using my exacto uh, knife, I didn't want to break the knife, but the supporter is on there pretty doggone well. The sidewalls, it's not really a smooth filament, even on top either. It's not smooth at all. It has a very, very textured finish to it, and I'm not 100% sure what was causing that, but that's just kind of how it feels. You know, it doesn't look over extruded, doesn't look under extruded anywhere. Everything pretty much is where it should be. Retractions were pretty spot on, but there you can definitely see that there were a little bit of issues in there with those. But overall, I mean, it was a pretty decent print. Um, I'm guessing that the, I should say, I guess the, the glass filled part is what makes it have yeah, rough surface, almost like sandpaper almost. But uh, yeah, it came out pretty good. All right, here is the PLA temperature color changing from Gizmo Dorks. I did have some doubts about this because their PLA that I got was one of the few ones I've ever recommended people don't buy. Uh, surprisingly, this came out really well. There weren't any under extrusions on this one. The retractions were pretty much right. Uh, this was printed on the FT5. So if you watch the time lapse, this printed actually in white because as you can see, as my fingers were touching. So I hold this in my hand for a second. You will see it's going to change on us. But while we're waiting for that, you can see here over the support, it did pretty well. Actually over here, over on the uh, this extreme overhang, or as you know, this angle here, it actually did really well in most parts, which was uh, kind of nice to see. If I move my hand, you can see there, it's starting to turn white there when it's hot. So it's pretty funny to watch a blue filament go into the extruder blue, come out of the hot end white. Just kind of funny. Uh, bottom layer is really nice on the PEI with a little bit of glue stick. That was just uh, what I already had on the bed, so I didn't change it out for this. Uh, top layer is real nice, really nice and smooth. No under extrusions anywhere, as I said. Uh, down here was a little, some gaps in here. I don't know what that was about because everything else came out really nice. It was just some of the top layers right here. 
super odd down there, but retractions are pretty good. Overall, pretty cool filament. I mean, if you're looking for something in the niche kind of to show off to your friends, it's really all color changing is good for. It's just kind of a show off deal. You know, hold it in your hand, get it nice and warm, and then open it up and then it's, you know, a different color. All right, and finally, we have the Python Flex from Form Futra. You can see it's kind of hairy. Uh, and the texture is really not that smooth at all. Other uh, flexible filaments that I've used have a nice smooth wall to them just like PLA does. This one does not. It's very textured. My thinking is that this filament had moisture in it. I did not dry it before printing it. I pulled it directly out of the bag, threw it on the printer on the FT5 and hit print. I wanted to get it right away to get it going in case it did have moisture in it. It probably did, which is why it didn't come out all that well. And that's really sad. Uh, I think they need to take a little more care in preparing their samples for this because not everyone has a food dehydrator that they can just throw this in and dry out the filament or even know to do that. You know, it kind, these kind of should be ready to print out of the bag. I know that's hard to do and that's probably expecting too much, but that is my opinion uh, on these, these samples that they should come out right away. So all of the supports, no problem at all. It prints supports, no problem at all. This one printed in the one time and one time only. So it's nice and easy to do. But yeah, so retractions, a little bit of issues there. That's kind of uh, normal with, P with uh, the flexible filament. It's like a TPU type of filament. So yeah, overall it's okay, but there's definitely something going on in that. All right, so there's the March Maker Box. Hopefully this helps you guys out and help you out if you have any issues with any of these filaments, let me know. I do have my website, going to be launched later this summer, which is going to have all of these filaments listed in there and the print settings that I used and just maybe a Simplify 3D profile. I have not decided if I'm going to invest that kind of time yet. I need to see kind of what the uh, ROI is going to be on just the site alone is taking a lot of time and inputting all these is going to be a ton too. We'll see how that ends up going, but eventually I'll do that. If you so if you do have any questions on any of these, just let me know down in the comments and I'll reply and give you some of my settings, what I did and things like that. If you guys are interested in checking out the MakerBox, down in the video description there's going to be a link and there's going to be a coupon code 15% off. If you guys go ahead and use those and if three people sign up, I end up getting a free maker box. This one actually was free this month, yay. So more than three people signed up in the last month, so I'm happy for that. Thank you guys for doing that. I find the maker box to be one of the most educational products out there that you can actually get on a subscription basis when it comes to 3D printing. You get four filaments, you don't know what they're gonna be, you gotta figure out how to print with them. That's how I look at it. Other people might look at it to try out new filaments, whatever you wanna do. But if you're looking to challenge yourself every month, you might wanna check out the maker box. So again, down link down in the video description, use that. Three people, I get a free box, awesome. If not, I pay for it, that's okay. I love printing with this, it's a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you found this useful, whether or not you should subscribe to MakerBox, or if you have any problems with these filaments, hopefully I gave you a little bit of guidance on what to expect with them. If you guys liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up, if it didn't, thumbs down, and talk to me in the comments down below, I'd love to hear from you either way, what you think about my MakerBox series of videos. If you guys wanna stay in tune with what's going on, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and if you wanna get an notification when I upload new content, Ring the bell icon, you'll get it when I do live streams or whenever I upload new videos. You'll be one of the first ones to know that a new video is out. If you wanna help me out financially, loads of ways to do that. There's a Patreon link to do it monthly, a few donation links down in the video description, and there is a bunch of affiliate links down there that you can update your bookmarks with. And anytime you do your shopping, a little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me with the channel. I thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, happy printing.